السلام عليكم the last part in ECMO circuit is cannulas as we said before ECMO circuit is a closed circuit it started by drainage cannula and end by return cannula so we will discuss in this lecture the types of cannulas and the size of cannulas and technique of insertion cannulas are an important part to determine ECMO flow in the circuit they have the following characteristic thin walled with maximum internal diameter with the least external diameter presence of wire reinforcement so they will resist kinking during insertion also help them to be radio opaque we can follow the site of the insertion by the x-ray prevent the collapse at the venous side will generate minus 100 millimeter mercury by the pump the size of the cannula is the outer diameter of the cannula this can be expressed in the fringe H1 millimeter in the lens is equal to 3 French. The diameter of the cannula is very important to measure the flow more than the lens. Based on the seal law, so the, the flow is fourth power of the diameter. Even the cannula of the, of different, of the same size by different manufacturer, we have different flow and different pressure drop characteristics. ECMO circuits has two types of cannulas, venous cannula or drainage cannula. It's usually inserted in the venous side, whatever the type of ECMO, venous or venoarterial. So inserted in femoral vein or right internal jugular. They are larger in diameter and longer in length, and they can determine maximum ECMO flow. They are single stage or multi-stage, that means have multiple pores for efficient drainage. Their end are tapered end, allowing support of negative drainage pressure and preventing basal collapse. Arterial cannula or return cannula. Their site depend on the type of ECMO. If it's venous ECMO, they will be inserted in the internal jugular vein or femoral vein. If arterial ECMO, they will are inserted in femoral artery or axillary artery. They have lesser diameter than the venous cannula and shorter lens. If it's inserted in the artery, so they will have your connection to connect it to the reperfusion cannula, allowing the perfusion of the limb distal to the cannula. We can determine the pressure pre and post oxygenator. It's single stage. The tips of the cannula may be straight tip, so more stroke will happen than pent tips. The, this is the picture of straight uh, tip. The other tip is angle funnel shaped. This is important to reduce the shear force applied on the aortic wall. This is the shape of funnel shaped cannula. ECMO cannulas are made of biocompatible polyurethrin polymer. Coating with this polymer will decrease platelet activation. There is ECMO cannulas which are heavily coated. The new type of cannula called smart cannula. It is wired structure. This part is uncovered, only wire, mesh of wire, allowing collapse during insertion. Then after insertion, it will expand in situ, so allow better fixation inside the vessel. Double human cannula can be used in VV ECMO. It's inserted in internal jugular, and right internal jugular, like hemodialysis catheter. So we have two ports, one for drainage and the other for return the, the oxygenated blood. If we take a closed section, for uh, the drainage port, we will find that one in severe vena cava and the other in the inferior vena cava. And the return port will be in the right atrium directed towards tricuspid valve. The cannula size will range from 23 or 27 and 31. As double lumen cannula is two lumen, inflow lumen, and drainage lumen, the open and single lumen. Uh, so, in this single lumen, it is divided into two parts. Drainage lumen 
which is twice the size of the inflow lumen. And if we go for the advantage of the double lumen cannula, we will find easy mobility of the patient at a single site insertion, low incidence of recirculation. The disadvantage, it requires real time imaging. It needs expert in insertion or expert, uh, expert team use it uh, in insertion. Flow limited if we have patient with a high body mass index. So we can't achieve this uh, flow uh, with, with, uh, with uh, this cannula. Shear stress was higher in the range of lumen and regions of turbulence were found at the connection site to the tubes. Pitfalls during cannulation, vessel perforation, atrial perforation, wrong vessel cannulation, inadequate range as malposition or inadequate cannula size, cannulate hepatic vein as we have in this picture. Now we will mention some tips to prevent complication during insertion of dual human cannula. First, don't cannulate too low in the neck, as the angle will be too sharp for big cannulas. Use more posterior approach to right internal jugular. Avoid upside down catheter. We can use flow directed towards the right atrial wall to show the direction of the insertion. Avoid coiled wire proximally. This is imaginary line showing that the wire is coiled proximally, and the red line show the right the, the right side of the insertion of the cannula. So during insertion, we can use fluoroscopy guided transesophageal echo or ultrasound to detect the the presence of the uh, wire inside the inferior vena cava. The form of venovenous ECMO is the femoral femoral uh, cannulation or FAM FAM. Its advantage is it's easily to be done by one operator, lower incidence of recirculation, and not require imaging. And if we see in this picture, the drainage cannula will be lower than uh, the return cannula, about uh, 15 uh, centimeter. And if we, uh, for, for example, put the drainage cannula higher than return cannula, so there will be higher incidence of recirculation. The disadvantage, it will limit the mobility. There will be IVC crowding. Multi-stage cannula used for the drainage only in femoral femoral approach, so as to decrease blood flow recirculation. Another form of venovenous ECMO is femoral jugular. The drainage cannula will be uh, in the femoral, reaching inferior vena cava at the, uh, at the level of uh, hepatic vein. And the return cannula will be in the inter internal jugular. The advantage is familiarity, a bit side, not, that doesn't require imaging. The disadvantage, limited mobility and potential for recirculation. So after inserting the cannula, we should take X-ray and measure the distance between the two cannulas should be at least 15 centimeters. Here we will go for peripheral veno-arterial ECMO. And we will start with femoral femoral. The axis will be a femoral vein, uh, and the return cannula will be in femoral artery. Sometimes we can use uh, the axis in internal jugular vein, and the return will be femoral artery. The cannula size will be uh, 15 to 19 French uh, size uh, in single stage. It is uh, advantage is familiarity. We uh, can we perform it uh, by one operator. Uh, bit side not require imaging. The disadvantage it will limit the mobility. There will be a differential hypoxemia, especially the heart will start ejecting. Leg ischemia, so it will require reperfusion cannula. After inserting peripheral VA ECMO in the femoral artery, the return cannula will obstruct the femoral artery, so no flow will go distally to the head to the leg. To resolve this issue, we will connect the reperfusion cannula, which will be connected uh, to the side port of the cannula and insert the distal in the femoral artery distal to the ECMO cannula, so allow perfusion to the limb. It can be done percutaneously by ultrasound or fluoroscopy. And the size of this cannula will be ranging from 5 French to 10 French, mostly it will be 9 French.
The second type of venoarterial ECMO is central venoarterial ECMO. Uh, it is done by the axis should be done in distal end in proximal inferior vena cava or right atrium. And the return cannula will be in the aorta. The advantage, there is no risk for cerebral or coronary hypoxemia. We can use a larger return cannulas. The disadvantage, it will limit the mobility and it needs times to, uh, to be performed. Uh, it doesn't need sternotomy, so it's usually done post cardiac bypass. Cannula insertion technique. The most common is percutaneous technique, and it has low risk of bleeding. Tiny open technique, which has visual guiding for percutaneous insertion, can be used for venous venous insertion in neonate. Option for adult cannulation. Open surgical technique, which is required with the ligation and using burst string suture and backup option for field percutaneous technique. Percutaneous technique will have higher successful rate as it will have less bleeding and less vascular injury. Faster to start ECMO. The aim for anterior wall cannulation is more easier to dilate and cannula insertion, less guide wire kinking. Avoid posterior wall cannulation and align direction of needle and guide wire with the axis smooth dilatation and cannula insertion. If we look at this diagram, we will find that there is wire kinking at the dilator and the guide wire not in the same direction. But smooth in line entry, so we will avoid kinking of the guide wires at the dilator and the guide wires in the same direction. Steps for percutaneous insertion. Inguinal ligament is unreliable marker. Maximum pulsation over common femoral artery. Ultrasound is important to ensure a proper visual anatomy. Fluoroscopy can be used uh, in single and dual human cannulation placement to assure guide wire location. Transvesocial echo can be used for a dual human cannula. Guide wire has no resistance, so it should be smooth, inserted, float easily, pack and defrost. With each step, we should do dilatation, and the dilatation in the form of rotational movement more than forward movement. Here we can see the guide wire freely moving in the inferior vena cava uh, uh, with ultrasound. This is not a common practice during insertion, but we can do it if we have the ultrasound and have someone extra to do it. This uh, picture during insertion of the uh, ECMO, the guide wire seen in few vena cava, and there is the junction between few vena cava in the atrium. We can see uh, the guide wire uh, here. Uh, this is not common practice, but, we, but it's preferred to be done. The cannula in the inferior vena cava and the right atrium. Steps of insertion for percutaneous cannula. Don't kink the wire. Dilate along the axis of the wire and the vessels. So we should know that the wire and the uh, vessels and the dilator should be the same line. Don't let the wire pull out of the vessels during dilation. So we should have external fixed lens of the wire uh, during the process of insertion. Insertion is smooth except later resistance at the skin and fascia. So also we can use a, a two-person technique. One will use a dilator to dilate, and the other uh, use up and down movement of the wire. Uh, the depth uh, of femoral venous cannula to, uh, to the level of inferior vena cava will be 14 to 45 centimeter. And if we use internal jugular, it, uh, the, from internal jugular to superior vena cava, 15 to 18 centimeter. And also, it should be uh, ultrasound guided. This is references of this lecture, besides also read book. Thank you, and the question can be posted in the comments.